As I walked out on a May morning, on a May morning, right early, I overtook a handsome maid just as the sun was rising. And she sang la da diddle la da diddle la da diddle tidal on my D, shidle on my D, and she landed. Her shoes were brown. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is David Gillespie with Pumpkin Town Primitives. Tonight we're going to go straight into a little video about a primer for how to begin writing with a quill pen. And uh, instead of trying to confuse you with teaching you how to cut your own quill and temper the quill and all these things, um, I want to shamelessly and unabashedly promote our pre-cut quills that we sell on our online store. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. But these come in fletched uh, pieces that have already been cut like this or in ones that are uncut like this. There's uh, a lot of variety there, but the, the points are sharpened basically all the same way and they uh, are ready to go straight out of the pack, so to speak, when we ship it to you. So these are already tempered, they're already sharpened, and they're ready to start writing with. So tonight, we will use one of these as a demonstration piece. Also, I have a lot of questions about whether this quill is for a left-handed or a right-handed writer. So, uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I have found that whether... Uh, it is the left wing of a goose or the right wing or any combination thereof that I have found that I can write equally as well with a pen that curves this way or this way. So if it curves this way, it seems, if it curves this way, it seems to fit better in my hand like that. And I seem to write just as well with it as one that curves the opposite direction from my hand. Uh, if you agree or disagree with that, I'd like to hear your comments in the section below. Um, but for me personally, I found no difference in either one or the other. So we actually have stopped listing them on the online store, left or right-handed writers for that purpose. So, but anyway, let's get right into it. As a reference, we will use the the alphabet here, and I will leave a link in, for it in the description below as well. But uh, typically in the 18th century, we see the use of the round hand, uh, sometimes the Italian. But I have found that unless you are a copper plate engraver of some sort, that I have found that most letters, original letters that I have seen, follow neither round hand or Italian that they are just their own personal creation. And that's what I do. I don't really copy a round hand verbatim or an Italian hand. These are great um, places to start. And I think if you can copy these, it would make it much easier. But I find it much more interesting to use original letters that you know are interesting to me that I use to start with. So that's what I do is a, an amalgamation of letters that I have found that I enjoy. Okay, so in regards to inks, uh, I use a walnut hull ink that I uh, have made um, from walnut hulls. You could do something like that. In my soapstone ink well, I actually have my powdered ink that we sell on our online store that you can mix up for that in the middle well here. And I have videos about that, which I can also link in the description below as well. So, you can get Higgins Eternal from the Hobby Store, Hobby Lobby, places like that. Uh, right now, we're not really concerned about the type of ink, but we are concerned about the, uh, the paper and the, uh, the quill. So we went over the quill. So the paper, we sell this paper on our online store as well. It is a laid paper, and it has a little texture on the one side, as you can see here. And on the other side, it's a little bit smoother. Now, I personally prefer to write on the textured side because I think it looks better. I haven't found any difference one way or the other with the ability to write on it. But this is, um, this is laid paper that we sell for $5 a pack. Try to make it affordable. 
and I think it takes the ink very well, whether I use the walnut hull or the powdered ink or even Higgins Eternal. Okay, so typically in 18th century letters, you never see uh, lines that help us guide letters. So I recommend that you practice though with lines, I think, and with this paper turned on its side, you have uh, the laid uh, lines, and so I can kind of use those tonight to help to give us an idea. So, but when I'm starting with the quill, I basically just dip it into this little, we sell these glass ink wells also, and I just dip it in to maybe a three, you know, half an inch, quarter inch to a half an inch up, about like that. And then it'll stay uh, able to write with for quite some time. So let's just start with a capital A. So gotta get it wet here. What we're trying to accomplish here is you just want the the tip of the the quill pen to just lightly touch the paper. I know there's a lot of 19th century material out there that you would use, that you would think you would try to push down hard. You don't try to push down hard with these quills. You just lightly touch the paper. So the tip of the quill, if we can show like a blade, it has two edges, one here and one here. And you almost just want to use one tip. You don't want to use it blunt and you don't want to turn it so much, but I have found that for me, I just typically try to rock it backward and just use this back tip back here, if that makes sense. If I could use this as a blown up example of the tip, I would just be writing with this edge here, just like that right there, if that makes any sense. So let's try this again. Capital A. That's all I do right there. Capital B. With the stem coming down. Something like that. So again, the capital B. Like that. And you can cheat and thicken the... Uh, Stroke up a wee bit to improve it if you want it to look a little bit fancier. So we can do a capital B again. It's called a capital stem. Something like that there. So a capital C. That's the one I use. I've seen on a lot of period letters. So we can try that again. You can always go back and correct. There's no law here, All right? If you wanna improve the look of that C, you can thicken the stroke right there a little bit. Capital C. All right. I like capital C, so. There it is again. My name, David, starts with a D, so I, of course, enjoy the capital D, which would be something like that. Capital D. like that. Capital E. That's the one I typically like. And you can improve the look of it there. So again, a capital E has a larger bottom, just a little tiny top. Capital E. I don't refer to this as calligraphy. This is 18th century letter writing. So that's why I don't follow all the, the rules of the calligrapher. 
because in my opinion, this is not calligraphy. This is uh, everyday, everyday work. Capital E once again. I would also like tonight to give a shout out to my friend Lucas Paul Velasco who sent me this beautiful letter a few months ago and I haven't had a chance to return the letter but I'm trying to uh, get to it tonight Lucas so shout out to Lucas in Florida and Lucas also provided me with this gorgeous handmade uh, beeswax candle that I will be using to um, illuminate my letter writing as well as to seal with the rack the red wax so shout out to lucas paul velasco friend of the channel thanks lucas so as you can see these aren't perfect letters that's the perfection of them they look real at least they do to me you may think not uh, but to me they look authentic they're the authentic type they're just little bits of imperfections show that they are hand drawn and hand uh, lettered. If and when it's possible, I like to show original uh, accoutrements and documents. This is an original document from France from the 1720s and 30s. Um, this is on a rag type of paper and it has a bluish tint to it. And since I'm not French, I can't read the beautiful writing, but you can see it has that same sort of a flow that maybe some of the letters that I do. I like this because it's it's real writing. It's not round hand or Italian. It's just this man's or woman's particular style of writing. So you can see that it is um, a folio. So for a nearly 300-year-old piece of paper with handwriting on it, I can learn a lot from it. And you can see the texture in the letter that it has a similar quality to the type of paper that we sell with the uh, laid look to it. So the, the ink is kind of brownish, which is what I like to do typically with my own style. And the back has just some few small slight marks, but these were legal documents from a legal document trunk that I got these in a an estate sale from France. So always try to study original documents when possible. And it helps to add charm and flavor to your own work as well. I recommend when you practice, that you practice with a purpose. So if your goal is to try to make an impressive looking bee, then just take your quill and your ink and some scrap paper and fill this paper completely full of bees until you're satisfied with it or C's or whatever this isn't an exhaustive study tonight this is just introductory but I wanted to at least give you some encouragement to remember the main thing is you just want the quill tip to barely touch the paper you just you almost want it to not touch if you can find the fine line between the quill um, touching the paper and not touching the paper right on that fine uh, dividing line would be the perfect place to start writing. You don't want to put pressure on these quills because they will flex, they will, they will chatter, and your work will look terrible. So delicacy, remember that. Delicacy, delicacy. Be delicate with this, and you'll get much more delicate results, and you'll be much happier. I'll do more of these videos if you are interested. Just let me know in the comments below. And like and subscribe if you would please. And we will continue these as long as you are interested. Thank you. Check out our online store for a full line of the writing accoutrements you'll need. Where we have the laid paper that you can use. We have sealing wax. We have ink. We have quills. We have books on the uh, proper way to write, so go check that out in the description below.